Welcome to another week of Family Life with Mama Rita. Since the Valentine's Day, we've been doing Finding Love Again. And it's been something else. I mean, people have come, shared their testimonies, and we have really learned. And last, two, last week and last two weeks, we brought Dr. Seth to the studio to talk to us about the psychological effects of divorce, breakup, um, losing a loved one. And I want to give a shout to Dr. Seth. Dr. Seth, you were marvelous. You were powerful. What I did, you remember I told my audience that we are going to bring you again to answer all the questions people have. But please, as I speak, let your questions flow. If we are not able to answer the questions today, we will answer them next week. So today, I want to handle the mistakes we do when we are finding love, the mistakes we do. Sometimes people make a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes when they are finding love. So what are some of the mistakes we do when we want to find love again? Number one, we leave ourselves. We don't care about ourselves anymore. We don't dress up. We don't make up as we used to. Um, you know, we just leave ourselves. We don't go to the saloon. Why? Because we are so hurt. We are so down. And we think that our world has come crashing down. My darling, if you continue not to dress up, if you continue not to make up, if you continue, you know, not to do your hair, go to saloon, do your hair, you won't find love again. Why? Because you'll be sucking the men away from you. There's another man that is coming, another woman that is coming. Better than what you lost. My darling, put your life together. Start dressing up again. Start doing the things that gave you joy. Start bringing a smile on your face. Some men, when they see you, they want to see you smiling so they'll be able to approach. Some women, when they see you, they want to see a smile on your face so that they can approach. So please, Start dressing up. What we do not know is that Joseph lost love. It wasn't the love of a woman. It was actually the love of his brothers. He lost it totally. They sold him into slavery. But guess what? When his brothers saw him again in Egypt, they couldn't make him out. Because he was looking so magnified. He was looking so gorgeous. He was looking well. I mean, he had taken good care of himself. My darling, if you want to find love again, just like Joseph, after the head, cry small, put your life together, start dressing up, start going to the saloon, start making up. Number two mistake we make when we are finding love. When somebody comes, we give up or give out too many informations about ourselves. My darling, when somebody comes, go slow. Go slow on the information we give. Don't give too many details. Because sometimes when we give too many details, we sort of sell ourselves that instead of the person who is coming, um, must fall in love or something. They actually get scared of us. Be yourself. I mean, just be yourself. Don't pretend to be something you are not. Don't go talking too much. Be yourself. I hope somebody heard me. A mistake people do when they give out two many informations or too much information is that in the first five minutes of you know of dating of going out every sentence they mention their ex every sentence they mention their ex every sentence they mention their ex my darling you are telling the new one that is coming 
that you haven't gotten over him. When somebody new comes, don't be mentioning your ex after every sentence or after every comma or after my darling. Let him go. And the truth is that if the guy is for you or the lady is for you, they will come back to you. I've seen it happen so many times in my ministry where people broke up. Some way, somehow, they came back. Where people divorced, some way, somehow, they came back. Whilst you're on the break, don't spoil the relationship. In other words, when he sees you and he says hello, say hello back. Let him know that he's not God in your life. Let him know that when your mother was giving birth to you, he wasn't around or she wasn't around. With or without him, you can move on with your life. So don't give up, give out too many informations. Another mistake we make, my darling, stop comparing yourself with others. Yes, I understand. You grew up together. You were in the same school. You grew up in the same church. You attended the same um, children's ministry. Um, you attended the same teens. Just at the time you found your, your, you know, your person, she also found hers, or he also found hers. If you are not careful, instead of moving on, you will keep comparing yourself to that friend whose marriage is going on well. You will keep comparing yourself to that lady whose marriage or relationship is going well. My darling. We have different tes um, destinies and we have different missions in life. We are never the same. And I want everybody to know that everything you go through, you go through for a reason and for a purpose. It's a learning curve. Let's learn out of our mistakes. Learn what God wants you to learn and then move on with your life. Your calling might not be the same as somebody else. So the fact that she's still in her marriage, she's still in her relationship, and things are moving on well with them, doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you. My darling, God hasn't forgotten about you. Number one, you will have a better testimony. Number two, God is lifting you to the top. And sometimes the people who are in our lives don't deserve to be at the top with us. Where we are going, God knows that they won't take you there. God knows that if they are with you, you will never get there. Stop comparing yourself with somebody else. Our journey is independent of anybody else. You are not the same. You are not like Sister A. You are not like Brother C. We are different. Our assignments are different. Our callings are different. Our genders are different. Yes, it's happened to you. You won't be the first, neither would you be the last. Others will also go through it. For all you know, God is giving you a ministry out of what you lost. Somebody lost their husband. And anytime people come to me because they've lost their husband, they've lost their wife, and they want to attend, I, they want me to attend to them. I tell them, listen, I haven't gone through it. I don't want to come and sit here and pretend I know it all. There's somebody who knows it. Today, she's Dr. Lizzie Parks. I will push people to her. Today, she's remarried. She's enjoying her marriage and enjoying it very well. And today, God has given her hearts of people who have lost people, God has given her ministry of people who have lost people. So please stop comparing yourself with others. The next, let go of your ex. Let go of your ex and move on with your life. Like I said earlier on, 
if he's the one for you or she's the one for you, she will come back. But until then, my darling, move on. People have waited 10 years. They've waited 15 years. They've waited 20 years. Some people have even waited 25 years. Why? Because instead of moving on, starting on a new page and seeing what God has for them, they keep thinking about their ex. They keep brooding over their ex, going on the internet, finding out what they are doing with their lives, finding out who's coming to their lives, finding out, my darling, I said if they are for you, God will bring them to you. But until then, move on with your life. Sometimes, for all we know, they are happy. For all we know, they have moved on. For all we know, they have found somebody and they are enjoying life. And instead of you also enjoying life, moving on and enjoying life, we are brooding and brooding and brooding and brooding over our ex. And my darling, if we brood over our ex and we are thinking about them all the time, no new person will come into your life. You won't find anybody. The mistakes people do when they are finding love again. Our last, on the last phase, phase with God, with Apostle General, he said something that has stayed with me. He quoted Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and he read from the NLT. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, NLT. He said, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. This is God himself speaking. God says he knows the plans that he has for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Other versions says and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. And these are the lessons I learned when Apostle General spoke about this. He said, number one, face the reality of the situation. The reality is that you've lost the love. The reality is that you've lost the lady. The reality is that you've lost that gentleman. The reality is that you are going through a divorce. The reality is that um, you lost the person through death. It's a reality. Sometimes if you are able to face reality, you are able to better handle the situation and you are able to move on with your life. So my darling, face the reality of the situation. Don't be in a state of denial. Oh, I don't think it's true. Oh, I don't think this person died. I don't think I lost this person. I don't think I'm going through divorce. My darling, the truth is that you are going through it. Face it. Once you are able to face it and face it well, God will be able to handle the situation for you. Number two thing he said, or lesson I learned, he said, position yourself for a reward in your captivity. The people of Israel were in captivity. They positioned themselves for a reward. And God rewarded them. The 70 years of captivity came to an end. My darling, it doesn't matter what you are going through. Yes, others might not have gone through it, and they might talk. Yes, this is your second relationship. Yes, this is your third relationship, and so what? Don't look at them. Don't listen to them. Yes, you had a big wedding, and today it didn't work out. You are going through divorce. Those who want to talk, let them talk. Jesus said, those who have never gone through this, let them be the first people to throw the stone. 
my darling, when Jesus said that and said they should be the first people to throw the stone, nobody was able to throw the stone. Why? Because everybody was going through something. Somebody's own might be divorce. Yours might be something else. Somebody might be going through a breakup in relationship. The other person's own might be something else. Yours might be um, the death of a husband, the death of a spouse. Yes, it's happened. It's difficult. We all understand. But I am here to prophesy to you that in your wilderness, in your captivity, God is about to reward you. My darling, whatever you are going through or whatever you have gone through, in the midst of whatever you are going through, I am here to let you know that there's a reward for it. Face the reality that you are in captivity for 70 years. In other words, face the reality that you've broken up with your ex. While you are facing the reality, position yourself for a reward. My darling, if you don't face the reality, there won't be a reward of a new person, of a new dawn, of a new miracle, much more a better person coming into your life. And the last one that I learned, he said, stay in the revealed will of God. Stay in the revealed will of God. God still has plans for you and not disaster in our captivity. In captivity, God can still design your future. God will hear you when you pray in your captivity. The best time to pray is when you are in captivity. The best time to pray is when you are in low debar. Low debar is a place where nothing is happening in your life. My darling, the best time to pray is when you are in your darkest moments. As you pray, God will reveal himself to you. If you look for God in your captivity, you will find him. Your hope today is your future tomorrow. Apostle General's message has stayed with me. Your hope today is your future tomorrow. While you are in captivity, God is planning your future. Sometimes in your captivity, captivity, you think God has forgotten about you. Sometimes in your captivity, you think that God doesn't know what you are going through. Sometimes in your captivity, you think that God is paying you for some sin you committed 25 years ago. My darling, Jesus said, if there's anybody here that has not committed this kind of sin, they should be the first person to throw the stone. As Jesus had said that, he bowed his head and began to write. By the time he lifted up his head, everybody was gone. Everybody had vanished from the place. Are you in captivity? Are you crying today? Are you in sorrow? Are you in pain? My darling, get ready. Face the reality. Position yourself for a miracle. And stay in the revealed will of God. I believe that in your captivity, God has something for you. And... My last, before I bring my special guest in, one of the mistakes we commit when we are finding love again or when we lose love is that we lock ourselves up in the room. We don't want to talk to anybody. We don't want anybody to talk to us. We get so moody. We stay in the room from morning till evening. Sometimes we stay in our rooms 24-7. Our curtains are all drawn together. No sunlight comes into the room. No oxygen comes into the room. My darling, you are entering into the stage of depression. 
Go out there and find love. You have friends. Go out with them. You belong to a church. Continue to come to church. Yes, maybe when you come to church, people might look at you with an eye. But sometimes we think people are looking at us with an eye. But what we don't know is that people are minding their business. Sometimes we think people are looking at us with an eye. But what we actually don't know is that the people admire us. They admire us for our boldness. They admire us for coming out of the relationship. They are admire us for being able to divorce. They admire us for being able to come out in the open. My darling, don't stay in the room all alone thinking about your issues. I always say that if a satellite is placed here now and everybody is supposed to come and mention their problems, mention their issues, mention their predicaments, what they would actually do or what you would do is that you will leave yours there. Or no, you will leave the people's own day. Carry your own and run. Why? Because what you are going through is small as compared to what others are going through. Don't be depressed because of a man. Don't be depressed because of a woman. Don't be depressed because you lost love. Don't be depressed because you lost the relationship. Don't be depressed because you were divorced. My darling, in the midst of it, I hear God saying, it shall not be long. On Valentine's Day, we had three testimonies. Reverend Agri, who lost his wife through death and lost two children through death. Like Job, today, God has wiped his tears, giving him another woman, giving him three children. God has added on to what he lost. What are you talking about? We also had the testimony of Pastor Jifa, who went through divorce. Out of the divorce, she thought God had forgotten about her. She thought people were looking at her. She thought people were laughing at her. Then one day she went to church, and an angel came to her and said, You know what? In the same place the devil disgraced you, in that same place, God will magnify you. In that same place, God will place laughter in your mouth. In that same place, God will cause you to celebrate. In that same place, God will cause you to dance. In that same place, God will cause you to laugh. My darling, when God is bringing you somebody, he doesn't bring you the same. He doesn't bring you somebody lower. He brings it seven times what you lost. Today, when you see Pastor Jefe's husband, treats her like an egg, something she never experienced in her past relationship. And then we also had the testimony of Alice, who helped a man to travel out, went abroad, shopped for the man when the man was going, bought the man's ticket when he was going. The man said, don't worry, I will come back and marry you. Immediately the man went. There was a first call. There was a second call. And that was the end of the relationship. She never heard from that man again. Today, Alice is happy. She found a place in Christ. She found a place in God. She found a place in Royal House Chapel. Got busy with Royal House Chapel. Today, she's laughing because God has given her a man who understands her. God has given her a man that knows what she's going through. God has given her a man that knows her inside out, that stands with her and supports her. We know Reverend Agri also found love again in church. My darling, if you don't belong to a church, find a Bible-believing church. And like I say all the time, our doors in Royal House Chapel are open. Please come. 
who would embrace you. You would have a fresh start, have a new beginning. Reverend Agri went into drinking. Why? Because of the death of the husband. One day, he found himself entering into the gates of Royal House Chapel. And ever since, he's found so much peace. He's found so much joy. And he's found so much happiness. And I believe that your story will be the same. My darling, I won't sit here and say it's not painful. I won't sit here and say it doesn't hurt. It hurts. My darling, it hurts. But put, put the pieces together. Don't make the mistakes other people made. Move on. And I see celebration coming to you again. On this note, we will go for a commercial break. But before we go for the commercial break, I want to introduce to you two wonderful special people. Oh my God. Special, special, special. They've gone through it and they will share their story with us. We want to find out, did they make mistakes? We want to find out, did they look up to God? We want to find out what they did and how they've been able to come. My darling, I keep telling you, family life, I am going international. Ooh, guess where I am today? I am in Switzerland, in a church called NIC, New International Church. And with me is the apostle of the church, Apostle John Sego. And also with me is Pastor Sandra Sego. Hallelujah. You will hear their story very soon. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I can't wait to interview them. Relax. Relax. Today, you would also know that God will do something out of your story. We'll go on a short commercial. Before the short commercial break, I want to say welcome. Thank you very much. Thank and you, thank you. I know how busy you are. Thank you for accepting to come on Family Life with Mama Rita. Thank you very much. It's a very big privilege to be with you in this Family Life. I've been watching all the way from Switzerland. Wow. And so what a privilege to be able to be part of it today. Thank you. Yeah. Mama Sandra, you are welcome. Thank you, Mommy. I can't believe that a day was going to come that you, you will be the first lady yes. of new international yes, church, church worldwide. Right. What people do not know is that Vasti in the Bible mm. made mistakes, mm. lost her relationship, mm. lost her marriage. Mm. But what she didn't know was that God was preparing somebody, Esther, Esther mm. to take up that position, mm. to take up that honor, mm. and to take up that glory. Mm. Today, you are the Esther of our days. Mm. We will go on a short commercial break, mm. and we'll be back. Hallelujah. Easter Celebration 2024 with the Apostle General, Sam Crunchy Ankara. This year's theme is, My Grace is Sufficient, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Join us in this year's celebration on the following dates. Palm Sunday service, Sunday 24th March at 8 a.m. Good Friday services, Friday 29th March morning service at 8 a.m. And a power packed all night at 9 p.m. with water and salt feet washing. Resurrection Sunday services, joint morning service at 8 a.m. and communion anointing and impartation service at 5.30 p.m. The venue is the Oyu Dome, Obechebilamte Interchange. Come along with your family and experience His sufficient grace. The services will also be live on Facebook at Sam Crunchy and Kra, on YouTube at Powerline TV and on your favorite Christian TV channel, Powerline TV. 
Royal House Chapel, touching our generation with the power of God. Welcome back to Family Life with Mama Rita. If you are just joining us, today we are handling the mistakes people do when they want love again. And with me is a wonderful couple, my son and my daughter, who today have become a brother and a sister. When your children grow up to a certain stage, now you sit in counsel with them. You reason with them. You take up ideas with them. And this is the son that I have. He's made us so proud in Switzerland. A black man coming all the way from Ghana to establish a church here. My darling, you need to be here. The church is 95% whites and 5% blacks. How he's been able to do it, I don't know, but he will tell us the story. Apostle and Mama Sandra, you are welcome. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mama Rita. Thank you for having us in this program again. Before we even go into the mistakes and your new love and everything, mm. how have you been able to succeed mm. in this country mm. and have if I'm not exaggerating, even if it's not more, 95% white, mm. how have you been able to do it? Black man, black wife. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, how have we been able to succeed in a foreign land? Uh, I will say that, um, First of all, before I go forward, it's very important that I acknowledge your leadership uh, and also the leadership of Apostle General, uh, whom uh, we have been in relationship for the last 28 years. Uh, and uh, both Apostle General and yourself, you have been a pastor that I've looked onto for the last 28 years. And so I want to say a big thank you uh, for that relationship and uh, for that pastoring uh, of our lives, you know. Uh, so in the last 20 something years, when our church started in Switzerland, one of the things that the Lord said to me clearly was not to go like others went. When, they, when I answered the call, uh, he told me, he said, it might not be easy, but you will need to study the culture of the country where I have brought you. You will need to include the people of the land in anything that you are doing. You need to invest time in training people in the country and let your gift be a blessing first and foremost to the people of the land and then invite them into your leadership structure uh, and the rest will be history. So that is one of the things that really help us. Uh, it's really to uh, be able to minister to the people in the land and also to make sure that they are part uh, of our leadership. As you can see, uh, you have been coming here for many, many, many years with Apostle General, and you can see that every year you come, you see that our leadership is consist of the people of the land and the people from Europe. So that has been part of our success. Hey, Mama Sandra. Mm -hmm. I know there's a, a women's conference coming up. I can't wait for it. How have you been able to gather the women. People think that gathering women is easy. And I keep telling them it's not easy. Maybe it's easy for you. How did you gather the women? 
It's not easy, mommy. It's, I think, especially in Europe, in Switzerland, it's, it's hard mm -hmm. to gather them because, um, I mean, internet, we don't have uh, doom so we don't have uh, any problem with the connection. So everybody prefer to just stay at home and just watch. But I believe what brings them is Jesus. Is is like is that. the is what the fruit Amen. that they have seen Amen. that make them to come Amen. because they have seen the testimonies and they have seen Amen. the changes happening Amen. and they have encountered the law. So them themselves go and tell each other, hey, I, I just I was just I mean I'm 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 a big example to it. When 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 I received my healing, I just went to tell everybody. Wow. I met Jesus in the church, and wow. so they should come to the church wow. because the church is a place wow. where wow. Jesus stays. Wow. And I believe that people come and they follow you because of your leadership qualities. Sometimes people are expecting people to follow them, but they don't follow you if you don't have anything. That's you true. must have something to give. You can never give what you don't have. That's true. So if you don't have anything, people will not follow you. And That's this is right. something that I like to tell pastors and pastors' wives, mm. that you must have something. Mm. God bless you, Thank you for making us proud in this Amen. country. Mm. I feel so good, so, so, so good mm. to know that me too, I have a son mm. and a daughter <laughs> in Switzerland. Amen. A son and a daughter that will create a home for me mm. anytime I come here Amen. with Apostle General. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So... Reverend John Sego and Mama Sandra, I want to take you back a bit. Mm. I've been dealing with finding love again okay. as a broad topic. Mm. Before finding love for your current marriage, mm. you had a previous experience. Mm. Where did things go wrong? Mm. I don't know if you would want to talk about where yes. did things go wrong. Sometimes people think that as men and women of God, mm. we don't have to go through these things. Mm. Where did th people uh, things go wrong? Yeah, so I, I would like to start by saying that, you know, uh, no matter the counsel that we receive before we get married, uh, what people don't know is that it's two different things, you know, theory and practical. Because, like because no matter how much counsel or how much education you have gotten before you go into marriage, when you are in the marriage itself, mm. uh, things are not predictable. Uh, things goes in different direction that you didn't even plan for it mm. or you didn't expect. Mm. Uh, and so uh, when you are together with somebody, mm. that person have their mind, mm. have their calling, have mm. their, you know, mm. their world view, mm. so to speak. And so when you are together and then in that marriage, you are also receiving more and more vision, mm. more and more clarity mm. because you start maybe if you like as children in the marriage you know you and you are growing together mm. but in the process of growing together mm. there have to be a lot of agreement mm. and where this agreement comes in into the marriage it's where the marriage starts shaking mm. because when there is a lot of disagreement mm. and there is no the bible say how can two work together unless they agree, unless they agree. Mm. so most of the time what really happen when there is a problem in marriage is that there is a disagreement mm. there is there is division mm. division and no more together mm. there is two different vision mm. you know and so where there are two different vision the mm. division comes in and then it brings in distrust mm. and then all these things if it is not dealt with mm it will start to grow mm. and grow and grow mm. and eventually you know you both mm. can no more you know stay in the mm. under the same roof so in my case personally um when i got married i did not answer my call okay as of because uh, i met with my first wife mm. in a bible school wow. we we met in a bible school we went together 
to a Bible school in South Africa. Okay. And even though I always know I have a call, mm -hmm. I, I never thought it will, the call will be a problem. Okay. <laughs> because I always think, because I have a call and we have met in Bible mm -hmm. school, yeah. that we will never have any problem. Yeah. We will together go into that call, uh, you know, when the time comes. You know, so when we finish our school and in South Africa and then come back to Switzerland and then we now started a ministry, mm. that is where our problem started. Wow. Our problem actually started when we started the church, wow. you know, and this is what a lot of people don't know that it can be that the fact that somebody is with you when you have not yet discovered your calling That's right. does not necessarily mean that they will be with you, you when you discover your I calling. Like so when, when, because the process of discovering your calling, you go through a lot. Mm. You go through, uh, you yourself, like I say, you are like a child. So you are learning a lot of things are new to you. So you are learning a lot of things and you are trying to focus. You are trying even to convince yourself because uh, I, I, I was teaching the other day and I said that there are five to six major men and women of God in the Bible that when God called them, they were doubting the call. Yeah. And majority, when the call is really from God because the call of God is really big. He yeah. always come a seed what you yourself can actually comprehend. So when the call come and you embrace it and you realize, oh, at a point you start asking yourself, can I really go all the way through? Can I be faithful all the way through? Can I be able to do this thing God is calling me to do? So while you are doubting yourself, you are also encouraging yourself at the same time because you want, you want to please God. You want to do the will of God. So in the process, you then have to deal with the marriage because you still have to explain to the external you know, person that, uh, that is with you that you have now found this new love. And that is one thing also about accepting your call because it's like you accept it when you accept it it's almost like also finding new love so so if care is not taken it's like you are having two lovers at the same time <laughs> wow. that you have to wow. deal with you know and so the and you know that when you find a new love there is a, a kind of passion that, you, of you. that is inside of you that you, you just want to go all the way for it. But then it can make the other lover jealous. Okay. And so if you don't know how wow. to balance the two. I hope a young man out there is learning something. Yes. So, Somebody <laughs> that thinks that he has the calling of God over, over his life. Mm. I hope you are learning something. Yes. You married when you had entered into the call. Mm. Now within the marriage, you realize that you have a call. Yes. Remember, when we receive Jesus or receive the call, mm. it's like we have fallen in love again. Mm. Now here are you. Mm. You have two lovers. Yes. And there's always jealousy. Yes. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Wow. And, 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 the, and then also when you go deeper, you will see that you are dealing with a divine lover. Mm. And the divine lover has a lot to do with spiritual mm. and physical. Yeah. Because in as much as you could feel mm. the presence of God in the physical, you are also feeling it in the spiritual. Mm. And so sometimes you don't even know how to explain the spiritual aspect of it wow. than to just tell your lover, your physical lover, mm -hmm. that you are on the right track. Wow. You are convinced that you are in the right track. So in my case, there were these two battles that mm. was going mm. on uh, when I, I give my life to Christ. So, mm. uh, you know, Mama Rita, one thing you need to understand is that some of us that was not born into a pastoral home, we are not PKs, we have really lived life and we have served the devil and and if you now found jesus and jesus call you and put his passion in you you go with that craziness that aggressivity with that love that passion you used to serve devil you are using the same to serve god even more because you have now realized that he's the one that are forgiving you all your sins 
He is the one that have delivered you from death, delivered you from danger, delivered you from all kinds of evil you have done. So when you remember all the things he has done for you, you feel that you owe him more. You feel like you can't pay him all. So that even compile you more to want to serve him with all your might, with all your heart. Mm. And that's where sometimes your physical lover doesn't understand what is going on because they will now think you are fanatic, you are too you are extreme, losing it. you are losing it, maybe one day you will fall, you will, you know, make him so, a whole lot of things. So that was the beginning of my own challenge. Okay. So it helped me to go to the level whereby I have to totally depend on God because I, it, it comes to the point where you have to choose okay. between your wife and God between your wife and your relationship with God, because it's not even the calling, it's the relationship with God that you have started enjoying in another dimension. We will come to that again. I would ask you a question on that. Mm. But I want to find out, during the period of separation and divorce, mm. how did it affect the church? Mm. All right, so during the, the, the separation time, Again, it boils down to who you are and how you have pastored the church. Uh, when we were going through our you know, separation, uh, I was always very transparent to the church. i give you some example. Uh, my wife was a Swiss, my first wife. So she was the one a white Swiss. A white Swiss. So she was the one translating me. Okay. You know, because as you can see, our church always have translation. So she was the one translating me. So uh, when we had we started having serious problem, mm -hmm. I agree with her mm -hmm. that if we have a misunderstanding, mm -hmm. we can go to the church and pretend that everything is okay. So therefore, whenever we have a misunderstanding, either I don't preach or she doesn't translate me. But two of us cannot stand there like a perfect couple in front of the church behaving like everything is okay and then why we know it's not okay. And because I have this fear and reverence for God, I told her that we will not do that or I will not do that. So what happened is that I also told it to the church. <laughs> I also, just to make sure that we keep to our words, so I said to the church, we promise you that anytime we have a misunderstanding, we will not come together and minister together. Wow. So we will do separate ministration. Okay. Either somebody else is ministering or I minister with somebody else. Yes. Wow. And so that was one of the things that helped us that we, I was transparent. And then secondly, what also helped us in the process was that I was always ready to explain and to speak to the people of the church the process where we are in our relationship. Even though people were telling me, you are too transparent, this is going to destroy the church, not everybody have the capacity to handle it, but the Lord revealed to me that that is the way to go, that I have to be transparent. So that really was what helped us because also the culture that we live in, being the Swiss people, they love it when you are transparent. Wow. Wow. So the divorce didn't really affect the church negatively? No, as a matter of fact, it actually brought us growth. Wow. Because, uh, because uh, let me give you an example. Before the divorce, we were actually about plus minus 80 to 90 percent Africans. Okay. Because that was the early stage mm -hmm. of the church. Mm -hmm. And so Africans was coming. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two, we were renting one room okay. in the city center okay. where we were meeting. Mm -hmm. So when actually the separation took mm -hmm. place and it was public and everybody knows that we are no more together, uh, that is actually when God helped us 
to buy the property where we wow. are right now. And that happened under three months. Wow. That happened under three months of the separation. We bought the property where we are. And then not only that, that was also the time the white people start coming. Wow. So, so in, in the space of one year, during that separation divorce time, we have over 90% white people wow. coming to the church. So that was the change. So in our own case, I, I realized that the, being honest, being truthful, mm. uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, passionately mm. loving mm. God and serving mm. God, mm. Uh, you know, very often we preach that one with God is majority. Mm. We, but we, we, many at times we have not experienced it practically. Mm. But I will say in my own case, I could really say truly one with God is majority because when we start having our challenges, and don't forget, I am not from Switzerland. Mm. I am, like you introduced me earlier on, I'm from Ghana. And so being a black person here, everybody was saying his own is finished. His ministry is finished. Is, he can never make it. But that was actually when our ministry wow. took off. The Lord has been with you. Yes. I want to find out how did the divorce affect you personally, yeah. especially at the beginning? Yeah. So, you know, like... People, we are saying, I was thinking exactly the same. Because, you know, in as much as we have faith, in as much as we love God, you, will, you also are human. Mm -hmm. So when the whole divorce thing was going on, my first reaction to God was, God, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Switzerland ministry is over. Let me pack my load and go back to Ghana. So I was really telling God I want to go back to Ghana uh, because there is nothing left for me here. And probably this is also why God brought the turn around very speedily because God knows that if he has to prolong it long I will go back to Ghana. So that's why probably he led us or led us mm. in the space of mm. three months to go and buy a ha building wow. of millions of Swiss franc because he knows that that might be something that will commit me to stay in the country. But when it comes to emotionally uh, and spiritually, uh, when the whole thing was happening, I was really devastated mm. uh, emotionally because I have two children in the relationship and I came back one day uh, home and the children was gone, you know? And so, you know, this, I'm a, I'm a family man. I love family, I love my children. So coming back home and then my children and no more, that was really something that I was thinking, God, is this what you pay people that serve you with all serve their hearts faithfully. faithfully? So I thought that this was a punishment from God because uh, I feel very empty. I feel very lonely uh, when I come back and I didn't see anybody in the house and I was alone in the house. And so that was very troublesome. But uh, again, I must say that I quickly found uh, my, my uh, 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 restoration. Of course, Apostle General and yourself were there for me in this time because I could call you people and share with you what was going on and you were really, uh, you know, giving me the right counsel. And then apart from that, I was also knowing that from the counsel that Apostle General gave me, he said to me, wherever they summon you, because of this thing, this divorce issue, go there and just share your heart. Make sure that you speak as the situation is, but don't ignore or don't reject any meeting. That was the very first thing that he told me that really carries me. Then the second thing he told me is that he said, you got to go through this situation, but make sure that you, you are not too fast in testifying what God is doing in your life. Keep it hidden. Whatever changes that you are seeing, whatever hand of God you are seeing, just keep it low-key. There's going to be a time. There is a time for everything. And there's going to be a time whereby you can have time to thank God and testify to what God was doing. So, apart from that, those initial vacuum that I felt at the beginning when I start having restoration, talking about finding love. Mm. 
I, I believe because of the love that I have for, the, for God, uh, it really helped me to go through those to those season because I I really like I said before I really loved God when I went into ministry and so that love sustained me mm. that love for God you know looking forward to go and serve the people of God you know I, the the amazing thing I I need to tell you this uh, Mama Rita you know during this time I was you need to hear this story I I was invited to go and minister in United Kingdom and so. I, I, I finished ministering because as of the time we had this situation, we were having two services because where we were meeting were become too small. So we started the second service because my prophetic gift have always been there from the beginning. So he attracted a lot of Africans because they want to know if they are allowed to stay in this country, if they, if they, will, if they will pursue them overnight. So they, they always need my prophetic gift. And, and so because of that, our church get filled up very quickly anyway i finished my second service on this faithful sunday and then i was going to preach the third service in london so i took a flight and i went to london and then when i arrived in london i was so hungry so i said because my uh, uh, host did not come on time to pick me so i said let me go to a restaurant to go and eat and now remember i was just going through separation my wife have left me with children i'm asking god why what have i done wrong and all those questions and now i enter into a restaurant to eat this husband and wife that was leading this restaurant they were fighting in the kitchen wow. and the holy spirit said to me i should rise and walk into the kitchen and go and settle their quarrel i said to the holy spirit i'm just coming out from one and I have not finished dealing with my own problem. Wow. And now you are asking me to you go and settle. settle, you know, another quarrel. So I was refusing. And the Holy Spirit said, if you don't go, you'll be hungry. Because they are the ones that will prepare your food. And they are in the kitchen fighting. So you have to go walk past the restaurant, go straight into their kitchen and go and settle their quarrel. Wow. So, mommy, I realized that to serve God... It's not really about only what you are getting, but it's also what you are ready to do for him. And so in that state where I was still challenged with my own problem, I have to go to the re restaurant and I went there. When I got there, even the way I said to the problem, you will know I was angry with God. I went there, I said, shut up. Why are you guys fighting? You know, that was how, that's how I started. And then they all stood because they like they couldn't see anybody that have such a boldness to come to their own restaurant and they telling them to shut up. So when I say shut up, and I said, Don't you know this is a public place? You guys are here, you're supposed to serve me. I've been waiting. Why are you fighting? So I tell them, cook immediately, let me eat. Because me, I was more after my belly. So I said, Cook immediately, let me eat. I'm hungry. You know, and then the man walked out and the woman started cooking. And then she said to me, Thank you for coming. You have saved us because this thing could have been very dangerous. This man could have used knife of me. Wow. I don't know what would have happened. You know. So what I wanted to say to that is that whenever you are going through some things like this, don't forget. Number one, there is even though it was not an initial plan of God, mm. the enemy might have started mm. it. But the Bible tells us that all things work for good for those that love the Lord. And so because we have the love for God, mm. he will always turn that situation for our good. Wow. I hope somebody is listening. And one thing I've learned from Apostle John the fact that you are going through a particular situation mm. doesn't mean that you can't help somebody yes. going through to your same, same situation. situation. Mm. Don't allow the devil to whisper things into you. Mm. Uh, remove your log from your eyes before you go and remove somebody's mm. own. My darling, leave God to remove yours mm. and go and remove others. Mm. This is powerful. Mm. Amen. Amen.
This is Amen. powerful. So that actually lead into also the restoration of our church because I was always there serving. I was always there serving marriage couple. Even sometimes I would be in a marriage counseling and I was telling myself, you're actually going through the same thing wow. that you are dealing with right now. And God just take that love, that passion that I have to see people restore and then to preach to people and to you know share love. As a matter of fact, a lot of people were telling me during that time mm. that they, they, they really love you know our ministry. Wow. People come from everywhere. They wow. come from far and near to the service because they say that they can feel the love of God when wow. they come into the service. Wow. So I believe that the love of God is the primary thing that really has kept me during that season. So I want to ask you a question before I come to Mama Sandra. Mm. Mama Sandra, I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> From the time you divorced, mm. how long did it take you to find love again? So, Mommy, this is a very good question because when I divorced, I actually said to myself, I will not marry again. Because I thought, when, because more especially when I started doing ministry and then I started enjoying, you know, the singleness, you know, to be alone, uh, to travel, uh, you know, you don't need to talk to anybody, you just carry your bag and go, you know, you just, you know, you make your own decision and et cetera, et cetera. I was really enjoying it. So I was not thinking, let me use the word not saying, I, let me not say I wouldn't marry again, but I was not thinking about getting married. So, but what happened was that after two years, after two years of the divorce process, you know, because in this country, uh, first you go through what we call separation, and then that separation time takes about one and a half year, two years, and then between that time, you can still decide if you want to come back or if you want to you know, divorce. So, but at least the whole thing goes through two years, including divorce. So, in that two years' time, at the end of that two years, I remember when I came to the church altar, and then I kneel down and I said to God, God, you know, thank you for you have carried me through this process, and I know that now I am free man. And I'm going to really serve you, you know, because for me, the divorce was now official. So I say, I'm going to serve you and I'm going to follow you with all my heart. <clears throat> Mama Rita, you can't believe that same week, that same week that I said I am now a free man after two years of the separation was the same week I was praying for my wife here on the altar and the Lord said to me, open your eye. This is your wife. You were praying for her. I was praying she for her. She wasn't your girlfriend. We weren't even seeing you each other. You were not going out. No. You were praying I for her praying as a member. As a member of the church. And then the Lord said to me, open, open your. your eyes. This is your wife. For you to know how shocked I was, I left her on the altar where I was praying for her and I ran away. Wow. Actually, I was right at the door starting to switch off the light because we were a few people left some people were outside i think i was only with her the last people on the in the hall before they closed the door so i start switching the the door uh, uh, the uh, light off before she realized that actually uh, i'm no more praying for her wow. so she now opened her eye and find me at the door I was still receiving the prayer. She was still opening her hand receiving the prayer but i ran away because i was <laughs> So, Mama Sandra, how did you feel <laughs> when all of a sudden you opened your eyes and your pastor who was praying for you was away. nowhere to be found? <laughs> what was going on in your mind? What was going through your mind? I think the first thing that came to my mind is something is wrong with my pastor today. I just felt he's not all right. That's it. I just thought he's not fine. Something is wrong. So, after that day... So after that day, uh, actually what happened, uh, because that very day, because God knows that whatever he tells me to do, I will do it. So the Lord began to guide me. And what happened was three months before that event, mm. 
Holy Spirit told me to sow my car to one of our elders in the church. Wow. So I have sown my car mm -hmm. to one of our elders in the church. So I didn't have a car. And you were taking public car. I was taking public and you transport. you have given your car and out. And I have given my car out. So when uh, that incident happened, because it was late, you know, and she was, because what really happened was that a week before, she, she asked me to pray for her because of her study. She was, I think she was going to have an exam or something. So she asked me to pray for her. And that very weekend, it was a Friday miracle service. We have a lot of visitors. So the, the visitors was lining up for prayer to see me. So I told her, I said, as a member of the church, if you don't mind, can I pray for you next Friday? Because since your exam is still ahead, right. let me pray for you next uh, Friday, but let me attend to the That's visitor. Right. So the following Friday, you can't believe it. More visitor came. So the place was packed again. And there was a long line again. And people wanted to see me. So I have, I have you know, finished canceling them. I think it was around 11.30 or and something like that. Here was she waiting for you. Here was she waiting for me. And now I wanted to go because I had forgotten that I actually asked her to wait. So I wanted to go. And she reminded me, said that. But you promised me that today is my prayer. So I said, oh. Now I have to keep my promise. So that was why we, we are the last people that we are on the altar. So when that incident happened and I ran to the, to, out to the door and then by the time I recover myself and, I, and uh, she opened her eye and come and meet me at the door, I, I, the Holy Spirit then told me and said, be a gentleman. You cannot allow her to go home by this time of the day. Wow. So take a transport, help her to get a transport home. And I said, but I don't have a car. I said, Holy Spirit, you are the same one that asked me to show my car. I don't have a car, so wow. how am I going to help her? Then the Holy Spirit said to me, for the first time in my life, the Holy Spirit said to me, go and drive the church bus. Can you imagine? I have to be the one. I was like, I said, if people see me, what would they say? I, I have to go and look for the church bus key. And use right. the church bus with the church logo and everything to drive her home. So when I was driving her home, while we were driving, the Holy Spirit said, Ask her, will she imagine marrying you in one year? All this thing was happening in the same day after I came to thank the Holy Spirit that I'm a free man. So the Holy Spirit said, Ask her, can you imagine marrying you in one, one year? year. And then I, I was talking to the Holy Spirit. I said, this woman will be shocked to death. Because I forgot I'm one part. I'm he forgot the part. Okay. Mm -hmm. He first asked me, do you have a boyfriend? That's right. So in my mind, it confirmed that something is wrong with him. <laughs> because he... Oh, your pastor all of a sudden asked me that question. Praying for you, left you. Exactly. And I will ask you, do you have a boyfriend? Yes. And then besides, he knows everything about me. So I was thinking, something is really strange with him wow. this evening. And then after that question, mommy, he was silent. He <laughs> because did I was speak. battling with the Holy Spirit. He did not speak for about seven <laughs> minutes. Yes. So my mind reconfirmed again. He's <laughs> really not wrong. okay. Uh, I was battling with the Holy Spirit because I was asking myself, how do you put this kind of a question to somebody you were praying for a few minutes ago? And now you are not going to be talking about, will you not even, uh, can you imagine dating me? Not even can you imagine uh, me being married? Marriage, direct, in one year. And with specific timing. So, so I, I was saying to the Holy Spirit, I will not do this. So the whole thing was tormenting me, mommy. It was like a torment. So the whole thing was tormenting me. And so by the time we got to her place, I think when she was opening the door mm -hmm. to get out, because I know that it's the same Holy Spirit that I've been leading me is the one telling me this thing. So just to free myself. So as soon as she opened the door, I asked her, can you imagine marrying me in one year? She banged the door and ran away. So that was how I was able to say that what, thing. What, what went through your mind that night? Honestly, You still mommy, felt the guy was incorrect. <laughs> I did. And when I went home and I slept, I forgot about it. Okay. I did not remember at all. So I went, I went to work in the morning. Around 4.20 p.m. is when the whole thing came back. And I realized, oh, he asked me a question if I can marry him in a year. So then I asked myself, is he really okay? You know, and then also that same year, I told the Lord on the 
in the 31st of December 2008, I told the Lord, I don't want any man in my life for one year. I just want Jesus wow. as my everything. So when he told me, my heart was already given to Jesus. So it was like, I'm, I'm not interested, but then at the same time, I don't want to disappoint God. So I always told him, let the will of God be done. So how long did it take you to say yes? Six months. Six months. Yes. And in that six months, the Lord told me that I am not allowed to tell her that it is the Lord that told me that she's my wife until she accepts to marry me. Then I can tell her what happened on that fateful day on the altar. But I'm not allowed to tell her what happened. So, Mama Sandra, this is a man, your pastor, mm -hmm. you knew he had been married before. He was out of the marriage. Now he comes asking you, would you marry me? Didn't you think, hey, if he's gone through a first divorce, number one, he's too wounded. Number two, he's too hurt. Can I deal with it? Uh, won't the same thing happen to me? What was going on in your mind at the time? I think God really protected me a lot okay. um, because anytime he opened up to the church, what was happening, I wasn't around. So I never really got to hear anything. Okay. Not directly from him, only through uh, a member. Yeah, gossip. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would just tell me, oh, he, he said this in the church, but I never heard it from okay. him. So for me, and also at the beginning, throughout the whole six months, I, did, I loved him as a pastor, but that was it. So there was no other feeling for him. So I never worried about anything, or oh, what did he went through, how is it going to be. That never crossed my mind, because I, I really trusted in the Lord fully. And I knew, I promised the Lord, I want to just be with him and no one else. So I was not bothered. I didn't even pray over it. I told him... I'm too busy to pray about relationship with him. So he is the pastor. He can pray and then he can tell me what the Lord tells him. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and now, so there is the conflict. The Lord told me I should not tell her mm. that he's the one that is behind the whole thing in the sense of he's the one that asked me to marry her. She's waiting for me to tell her what the Lord tell me. So that was why we were dragging the whole thing. The only thing I encourage her throughout the six months is guide your heart. I was, our slogan in that six months period was, I was always telling her, guide your heart. Guide your heart. Don't just give in because of what I say or feeling pity for me or whatever guide your heart and be sure that when you are ready, you are ready. Because I also, like I said, I needed a wife, but I was not in a hurry. Yes, I, because I, actually it was when she finally accepted to marry me was when I actually know, I realized I was in, actually in trouble with all the women in the church. Wow. I didn't realize it. Because it was when she now said she's going to marry me. And the day I made it public, mommy, you can't believe how many African women that left our church. They left from one Sunday to the other. And then they went, go, they even went to her father. They went telling her father and said, look at this man. We were going to the church. We're hoping we will be one of the candidates. You and know, and we, he didn't look at us. He went and married because by that time she was already in America in a Bible school. So they said, because that was when I made it public. They said he went and married somebody in America. <laughs> so you've been married before. Yes. What did you do differently when you met her? Differently from your first relationship? During those period of courtship, and what did you do differently? Uh, uh, honestly speaking, mommy, I think what really made it easy for me mm -hmm. in our relationship was that, like the last sentence she just said, mm -hmm. she was in love with Jesus. Okay. So both of us was in love with the same man. Okay. So that really make our relationship very, very easy mm. because uh, it, a lot of things, 
uh, we didn't need to explain ourselves. We could understand a lot of things in the spirit. And, uh, and we also, because of the love that we both have for Jesus, uh, there were a lot of things that was based in we want to please God. Mm. As you can remember, mommy, she came to live yeah. with you for one whole month. Yeah. In I the remember process. too well. <laughs> in the process. And so these are part of it because uh, we discussed that if she's going to be a, a, a wife to a pastor, it's very good if she can come to my spiritual leaders and live with them and learn what it is to be a pastor's wife. And so she was ready to go through all this process. She was ready to go through the process of from one day to the other going to a Bible school, you know, and foregoing her you know, focus Comfort. for her own uh, vision and where she was running to. She just wanted to do the will of God. And because it was very important and in a high priority for her to do the will of God, it really make our journey very easy and is still what we are enjoying today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now you meet her. Mm. She's not in leadership. Mm. She's not a frontliner in the church. Mm. She was an ordinary person. Mm. Mm. Black girl. Mm. How were you able mm. to get the church mm. to accept her? Mm. So one of, the, one of the things that she na naturally is, she's a very humble woman. Uh, she's not materialistic. Mm. Uh, she's not somebody that look for position mm. even before she was you know she, she, we talk about marriage and she we get married she was never never in the church looking for position uh, she's somebody that will just come go behind she was in the media mm. she will go behind do her job mm. faithfully mm come during the week in the church, do her job faithfully and go. And she doesn't even know who see her and who doesn't see her. Mm. So with that attitude, uh, when she become the first lady mm. of, and don't forget by this time, we have already started planting churches. Okay. So she become the first lady of new international church mm. movement from one day to the other. And so when she become the first lady, we, ha we had an agreement uh, that you know, she's just going to remain the way she is. Uh, she, the, the people here love the authenticity of people. Mm -hmm. So we, we agree that she's going to be that way. Mm -hmm. But from my side, I was also talking to our leaders mm -hmm. that they have to see that this woman is a God sent. Because for a man of God that has so much vision, for the nation, for the continent, for the world, for me to be able to run. Mm. I need somebody that can be able to minister to me at home. I need a home where I can go to. I need a home that is homely. I need a woman that is a mother. I need somebody, like I said in one of our meetings, that can pastor me, where I can share my own burden and can speak with wisdom. So when I began to sense all those qualities in her, I began to share those qualities with our leaders. And I began to let them know that this is what this woman is doing for me at home. This is so if you guys are applauding me, you better applaud her more. Because if she's not giving me those peace, if she's not giving me those joy, if she's not, you know, honoring me and, and uh, you know, and supporting what God is asking me to do, I will not be able to do all what I'm doing. So I so that helped a lot because then the leader starts seeing that, oh, she's actually the source of the blessings that we are receiving. So the acceptance, uh, you know, come uh, rapidly. But all the same, there were still some people that didn't accept her because uh, especially of... Especially the blacks. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The blacks, <laughs> the blacks had problem uh, with her age. Uh, uh, they have problem with uh, with uh, uh, her being the first lady, you know, and so it was a challenge for them, mm -hmm. and uh, because some of them, more especially, she has served them in the church. Okay, that's that's the point. She mm -hmm. has served them. She has looked at them mm -hmm. as leaders mm -hmm. in the church, mm -hmm. and now from one day to the other, the you one that now... you used to lead is now your leader. 
God is complicated in very a very good way. <laughs> he has a sense of humor. <laughs> so before we bring the curtain to a close, yes. we are talking about the mistakes people make when they are finding love. Mm. With all your experiences, mm. what do you think are some of the mistakes people make mm. when they are finding love again? Yeah. So uh, I, I listened to you in the introductory mm. message mm. of this program today. Mm. And some of the things that you said is very, very powerful. Mm. Uh, you know, some of the mistakes is, you know, like I also said about myself, you know, you want to close up. Because you have been hurt before, you don't want to open up for anybody to hurt you again. So we have this whole thing that we want to just put a wall of defense. You know, we want to close up, shut up our emotion. And then you almost put up this attitude of uh, anybody that offend me, I give it back to them. You know, so you are, you are not really being yourself. So I think this is very important. You know, one of the things we saw in the scripture, more especially when you read in the book of Genesis chapter 32 and you read about the story of Jacob, you will see that Jacob, after he has left his father's house and have went and he has found fortune, has found favor, the Bible made us to understand that when he was coming back, he got to a place where he sent his wife away, sent his children away, sent all his wealth along to go with them, and he was alone. And before the Bible tells us that he was alone, the Bible told us that he was a good man. So the fact that you are a good man does not necessarily mean that you will not get to that place where you have to face yourself and you have to face your weakness. You have to face, you know, you, you your reality. And the Bible, and I love what the Bible says because the Bible says that when Jacob encounter the strange man that he wrestled with, the Bible says that he dislocated him. Even though he um, overpowered the man, but the Bible said he was dislocated. So I understand that sometimes when we are hurt, we think, why me? But sometimes God also allowed that thing to happen yeah. to us yeah. in order for us to also know going yeah. forward how we can handle people, how we can handle sources, how we can handle different situations. Yeah. It's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. So one of the things I want to tell people out there that are watching us today is that if you have been hurt before, number one, don't close up completely. Open up like it was said already by Mama Rita, you know, go, be ready for a new date. Be ready for a date because if you never give chance to somebody, how will you be able to know what they are made up out of? For example, if I never give chance to my wife, I mean, this woman is the best thing that ever happened to me in life. That's... I never know that marriage is this sweet. Uh... I never know that marriage is this wonderful uh... until I met her. And if I have never given her that chance, if I still was close up because yeah. I was disappointed, yeah. I was this man that came back home and my family was gone, and I think how can somebody do that to me and I will never allow any woman in my life I would have still be a lonely man today and I will be suffering so it's very important that we give the second chance and not giving the second chance doesn't mean that you have to compare I mean like you know Mama Rita have already said it today we don't need to compare the past with the present because God is a God of second chance and what God has in stock for us is always better than what is behind us. And so I realized that it's good for us to c come into the new relationship like nothing has ever happened. And not talking about the past, not bringing the past relationship into it. Don't compare your present with your past, but just carry it like this. Is, just behave like you are a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> behave like you have never met, you have never dated anybody before. You don't have a past. That this is a new chapter of your life. This is a new beginning so that the love, that love can grow on a healthy ground and not a replaced love. 
before we close the curtain, everybody who is listening to me from the UK, from the 4th to the 6th, royal ladies, we are having a UK camp meeting from the 4th to the 6th at MK Milton Keynes. Um, if you are not sure with the numbers coming on, you can call and the address will be given to you. Make a date with me. Our first edition of 30th Royal Ladies 30th anniversary um, camp meeting is coming on from the 4th to the 6th um, of, what month are we in? March, 4th to the 6th of April. April. Make a date with me, 4 to the 6th of April. I'm going to be there. Apostle General is going to be there. Reverend Imago Gomeda from America is coming. I mean, powerful and seasoned speakers. Our children that we birth in Royal House Chapel. When we started Royal House Chapel, the children we birth that started following us as toddlers to camp meeting this year they'll be speaking to us. Make a date with me from the 4th to the 6th of April in Milton Keynes for Royal Ladies' first edition of 30th anniversary camp meeting. So we will bring it to a close. Mama Sandra, you've done so well. Thank you, Mama. I want you to tell a woman out there who has also met somebody who's gone into one relationship, how can the man publicly give a testimony that this is the best thing that ever happened to me? How can you bring your children and the children he brought into the marriage together? Mm -hmm. You've done so well, mm -hmm. and I think you need to advise a young person out there mm -hmm. that is listening to us. Thank you, mommy. I believe really strongly if you know you have, you have married a man who has gone through divorce, love is the key. Mm. Because the man went through a lot, so your love will help him to overcome the rest. Mm. And then also you have to love yourself. You have to know who you are and appreciate yourself. So I love my life. I love my me also being alone, having my space. I love also being with him. I do not depend only on him. I know that God is with me. And then also come together in prayer because prayer is indeed the key. You know, having God as your foundation in the relationship, you go far. Trusting in the Lord together, you go far. And then when it comes to the children, one thing the Lord told me before I married was, Take his children as your own. Treat them the way you would treat your own children. And I took that. This is a woman of wisdom. Mm. I took that very serious, mommy. I really, I love them. Mm. When someone asks me how many kids, I tell them I have five girls. I don't God. see the difference. Yeah. You know, it's, it's after they ask for the ages, then I have to explain <laughs> them. But otherwise, I'm more like, I have five girls. Yeah. They are my girls. Yeah. And I love them so much. And... I always tell them how much I love them because yeah. I see them as myself. I see them as my own, wow. even though I, I was not there when they were born. But to me, they are, yours. they are mine. And I call the first one of his, I call her my firstborn. Wow. So she's really, I see them as mine. And wow. I think if you can accept the children of your husband or the children of your, your wife, wife, take them as your own, love them the way you want you know, you would love your own children or love them the way you want to be treated. Mm. And don't think because they are not from your womb, you can't love them. Mm. No, you can give them even a lot of love. Mm. If you love them, then that will also bring the family together. Amen. Now, the small girls, when they see the big ones, we are one. They wow. don't see the difference at wow. all. Wow. Wow. I can confirm that. Yeah. That is so true. And that has bring peace in our family. Amen. And uh, we are really grateful to God. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Apostle John Sego and Mama Sandra. I have really enjoyed my time with you this evening. Mm -hmm. And certainly this is not going to be the last. Mm -hmm. You've done so well, mm -hmm. and you are going to come on. Mm -hmm. I can imagine the questions that people have asked mm -hmm. or are sending. Unfortunately, because of time, we won't be able to 
answer all the questions. But trust me, like I always say, I will make a time and we will answer all the questions. Until then, same day, same time next week, make a date with me. My darling, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If there's ever been a time that you haven't been serious, this week, be serious. If there's a program in your church, please get involved. Friday, Good Friday, be a part of the service. For Royal House Chapel, we have service in the morning at 8 a.m. And then we come back at 9 p.m. for our all night. And it's always, I mean, fireworks. It's something else. And then Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, my darling, anything that is dead in your life will be resurrected. And Sunday evening is our traditional communion service. And you know in Royal House Chapel, our communion services are something else. Make a date with the Apostle General Friday morning, Friday evening, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and your life will never be the same. If you are guests and you come to church, please say hello to me and tell me, Mommy, I am one of your members on Family Life. From NIC, Switzerland, I say, I love you and God bless you. Chief Ape and all my guys in Ghana, God bless you. But these people have done a good job. <laughs> if you don't work hard, harder, I'm firing you and I'm bringing white people to work for me. But I love you and I love you and I love you. God bless you. Bye.